Okay, so we had started by um, having a little look at how to control exposure and white balance, and we've now been playing a little bit with tonal range. Let's move on to the next section of the basic adjustments. Um, so we, we've got three sec, uh, sliders that do similar things, texture, clarity, dehaze. The easiest way to show you what they do is rather than try to explain it is start pulling those sliders around. So as I pull the texture slider up, you'll see that that is adding a lot more kind of sharpness to the image. As I pull it down, we're getting a much more kind of soft focus feel. Um, again, this is not a slider I'd recommend using heavily. Um, and, you know, whilst you might think it's good to pull the texture up and have a little bit more of that kind of sharp feel, it can really bring out some blemishes that we can see over on this side of this woman's face. Um, similarly, clarity does a very, very similar sort of thing, actually. But as we pull that clarity up, we're also sort of increasing the um, level of contrast and decreasing saturation. Again, clarity is one that I'd use very, very gently. And dehaze um, will uh, either make the image more washed out or more kind of have a sort of really sharp contrast to it. I mean, this is trial and error. Have a little play, a little pull around. I tend to be very subtle if I make any adjustments here at all. Uh, at the moment, I'm just gonna bring a tiny bit more texture into the image, um, hoping that that's gonna sort of really make this amazing jewelry pop. Um, uh, so I've ended up with, you know, texture and clarity, not much more than uh, about 20 and 10 each. A subtle change it is going to be subtle. That is the nature of good photo editing. Um, at least uh, for photorealistic stuff, you want to be subtle. Uh, and then finally, I've got two sliders here that relate explicitly to color. Vibrance which I can pull up and we'll see the saturation in the image increasing a lot um, and saturation. Now, what's the difference between vibrance and saturation? It's difficult to say, to be honest. I don't really know. Um, saturation, it's interesting if I pull saturation to zero, we end up in black and white. Uh, and if I pull vibrance to zero, we don't quite end up in black and white. So it almost feels like vibrance is just a slightly weaker version of saturation. Either way, I'm not a fan of using these to change color in the image because the way they change color is what we call global. It's changing all of the colors and i would much rather be able to pick out particular colors that i want to make pop so i don't really tend to do much with the vibrance and saturation sliders either um, so to recap where we're at we've got these basic adjustments sliders to control the overall temperature of the image with white balance a slider to control the overall exposure and then we've got some sliders that increase the contrast or decrease the contrast in tonal range. We've got three sliders which relate to sharpness, and then we've got two sliders which relate to color. Um, as a final note, if you're editing here um, in, uh, and you think I want to have a crack at a black and white edit, there is a button just at the top up here, um, which I can press, which will automatically send me into black and white editing mode. As it happens, I don't want to um, edit uh, my image to be black and white um, because I think there's a lot going on with the color here that I want to keep. I think colors are a crucial part of this image. So those sliders are useful, but there's one major problem with them. 